Hi guys, welcome to this video on Le Chatelier's principle, which is looking at the conditions that affect equilibrium. In this video, we're going to have a look at how the temperature affects the equilibrium. So if you increase the temperature, does it shift to the left or the right? We're going to do the same with concentration. So if you increase the concentration of either the products or reactants, what happens to equilibrium? And we're going to do the same with pressure. So if we increase the pressure, is it going to favour the left-hand side or the right-hand side of the reaction? So if we start off with temperature then, nice thing to remember if you've got a reversible reaction is one direction is always going to be exothermic and one direction is going to be endothermic. Now if you increase the temperature it's always going to favour the endothermic side. So regardless of what type of reaction you've got, if you have an endothermic direction, if you increase the temperature it will favour that direction. Similarly if you decrease the temperature it will favour the exothermic direction. If we have a look at the Harper process where hydrogen and nitrogen react to make ammonia, the forward reaction is exothermic and the backwards reaction is endothermic. So if I increase the temperature, it favours the endothermic reaction. Therefore, it's going to move the equilibrium to the left and I'm going to get more hydrogen and nitrogen forming and therefore less ammonia. So the yield of ammonia will decrease. If I lower the temperature, it will favour the exothermic side. Therefore, it will be the opposite of what we've just said. Equilibrium will move to the right, I'll get more NH3. Okay, if we move on to pressure then. So if you increase the pressure of reaction, if you put a reaction under more pressure, it will always favour the side with less molecules. The reason being, the more molecules you have, if you put them under pressure, they'll bump into each other, collide with each other and react more, therefore there's more chance of them turning into the products. So if I react A and B together to make AB and AB2, you can see that I've got two products, AB and AB2, and I've got five reactants, A, A, B, B, and B. Therefore, I've got a ratio of five to two. Increasing the pressure favors the one with the least molecules. Therefore, equilibrium in this case will move to the right to my products. And therefore, I'll get a higher yield of my product. Similarly, if I have a reactant ABC and it breaks down to A plus B plus C, you can see that I've only got one reactant one molecule. My products, I've got three, therefore I have a ratio of one to three, and my equilibrium will shift to the left. Therefore, my yield of products will go down. Again, if we have a look at the Harbour process, you can see here I've got three hydrogens and one nitrogen, so I have four molecules for my reactants, and I have two NH3 molecules. Therefore, I have a ratio of four to two. There are less molecules on the right-hand side, so if I increase the pressure, it favors the right-hand side, and equilibrium will shift to the right. Therefore, my yield of ammonia will increase. On to concentration then. Now, this is a little bit different because you have to know which one you're increasing the concentration of, either the reactants or products. So if we start off with reactants, if you increase the number of reactants, you have more reactions occurring. More reactants, more particles in there that are going to collide together. If you've got more products forming, the concentration of the products will go up. Therefore, I will have a higher yield of products and the equilibrium will have shifted to the right. If I increase the number of products, the concentration of the products, the reverse happens. So I'm going to have more products, more products reverting back into my reactants. Therefore, equilibrium will shift to the left and therefore I will have a lower yield of my products and a higher yield of my reactants. Okay, now I know that's a lot to take in, so the best thing to do is to put that into a question format. So here I've got a question that says, what happens to the yield of bromine when you increase the temperature? Now it tells you in the question that the forward reaction is exothermic, and you know that the higher the temperature, it favours the endothermic reaction, which in this case is the backwards reaction. Therefore, the equilibrium will shift to the left, towards the endothermic side, and my yield of bromine will decrease. So you'll get one mark for saying the temperature favours the endothermic reaction, one mark for saying equilibrium shifts to the left, and one mark for the yield of bromine will go down. If I have the same question, but this time decreasing the pressure, as you know, if you increase the pressure, it favours the side with the least molecules. Therefore, if you decrease the pressure, it's the opposite of that. It will favour the side with more molecules. Therefore, in this case, I have more molecules on the right. I've got CO and Br2, so two molecules compared to my one, so the equilibrium will shift to the right. Therefore, my yield of bromine will increase. Finally, what will happen to the yield of bromine when I increase the concentration of COBr2? Well, 
you should know that if you increase the concentration of COBr2, there are going to be more reactions occurring. Therefore, equilibrium will shift to the right, and therefore my yield of bromine will go up because I have more products forming. So you will get one mark for saying more concentration of COBr2 equals more reactions occurring, one mark for equilibrium shifts to the right, one mark for more products will form, and one mark for the yield will increase. Right, I've got an apply question for you. So we've got a reversible reaction here, which is PCl5 goes to PCl3 and Cl2, and back again. So it tells you that the backwards reaction is exothermic, and it says explain the effect of increasing the temperature and pressure on the equilibrium of this reaction, as well as increasing the concentration of PCl5. So think step by step in terms of temperature, you know that the backwards reaction is exothermic, so is that going to increase or decrease the yield of PCl3 or Cl2? What happens if you increase the pressure in terms of the number of molecules? And if you're increasing the concentration of PCl5, what's that going to do to the amount of Cl2? So pause the video, have a go, and we'll see how you've done it in a minute. Okay, let's see how you've done. So if we start off with temperature then, we know that the backwards reaction is exothermic. If you are increasing the temperature, it favours the endothermic, which in this case is the forward reaction. So you get one mark for saying a combination of those. If it increases the forward reaction, the equilibrium will shift to the right. And if it shifts to the right, our yield of our products will increase. If we increase the pressure, you should remember it's the one with the least molecules will be favoured which in this case I have a ratio of 1 to 2, so it's going to favour the 1, therefore it's going to shift to the left. So you get one mark for saying it favours the side with less molecules, or talking about that ratio of 1 to 2, and you get one mark for saying the equilibrium shifts to the left. Therefore your yield will decrease, go down. And then finally, if you increase the concentration of PCl5, you're going to have more reactants, there are going to be more reactions, therefore you will get more products. If that's the case, equilibrium will shift to the right, and your yield will increase. So there are nine things you could have said there, of which you only needed six to get six marks out of six. Give yourselves a mark, and then we'll move on to the review question. The review question is, look at the following chemical reaction. We have COCl2, which breaks down into CO plus Cl2. Again, reversible reaction. Explain, using Le Chatelier's principle, the ideal conditions to use for this reaction. And you've got a list to choose from. So do you want to use 200 degrees C or 600 degrees C? Why? So all this is is application of what you've done, low temperature or high temperature, which is the one you need to choose? And I'll tell you, the forward reaction here is exothermic. 50 atmospheres or 300 atmospheres. Again, low pressure or high pressure, look at the number of molecules on either side. And then finally, low concentration or high concentration of our COCl2. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please click on like down below. You can also subscribe to get more updates. You can visit the website for more information and you can look at my latest video. Thanks for watching.